as the official doors of the church began to close. It was George Whitfield who pioneered a new mission. He began to speak in the open air and tens of thousands of people would come out to hear. At first John Wesley questioned whether it was right to preach outside of the church. But the amazing results of Whitfield's preaching proved that this was God's instrument. And soon Wesley overcame his prejudices and was preaching in the open air too. John Wesley himself was barred from preaching in his father's old church. So he stood outside on his father's grave and preached instead. When the Holy Spirit came in power as these preachers spoke God's word, a deep sense of conviction of sin would fall upon the listeners. Charles Wesley wrote, Many, no doubt, were at our first preaching struck down, both soul and body, As the message of the gospel was preached, some cried out in screams of deep anguish of soul. Some fell to the ground, others convulsed, shook or trembled in the fear of the Lord. Often John Wesley would have to stop preaching because the cries of conviction of sin were drowning out all else. Whitfield at first was concerned about these events which took place under Wesley's preaching. But when Whitfield preached and invited sinners to put their faith in Christ, Wesley noted that on that day four people fell to the ground. One was groaning, another shook, another called out to God with strong cries and tears, and the last was equally lost in convulsions all over his body. Wesley concluded, From this time on, I trust, we shall all suffer God to carry on his work in the way that pleaseth him. Wesley's greatest gift to the church was his ability to organise the converts into new churches. He never wanted to start a new denomination, but his hand was forced as the established church often hindered the great revival. In Bristol, the brothers set up the first Methodist chapel in the world, with rooms for preachers to stay in. From here the Wesleys preached the gospel unhindered and had a place to rest and plan. It was also from this pulpit that John Wesley spoke against the slave trade and helped Wilberforce and others in their fight to end the evil of slavery. No one was too poor or too sinful for Christ to redeem and this message of the forgiveness of sins and of a living faith in Christ took root as thousands would flock to hear the message of the gospel 